Hey, what's up? We're on the road to Wichita. IWR Wrestling tonight. IWR. Yes. We're going to see. Get old. Yeah. Malico. It's a Popo. Good old JR. Malico. Eugene. Oh, wow. There's a car like spun out. I didn't even think it's that icy on here, but. There's always a cars. Car off, off the road right here on I 35. Wrong way in there. <laughs> yeah, 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 I am him. Yeah, 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 I am him. Need a coat, I'll warm you up. Need a ride, I'll pick you up. I am here, anywhere. Don't I have amazing hair? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am him. Yeah, yeah, I am him. <laughs> so, we're going to be bringing you our adventure on the road. Yeah. We may make a couple stops on the way. Look hard. Look hard. You never know what the buffet club is going to be up to. Never know. Never know, especially never know. with Disco Dude back there playing with his new McDonald's toy. So, we yeah. will uh, film periodically and uh, see what happens. Hopefully, we'll find some exciting stuff that you guys would like. So, Hopefully. next stop, possibly Beetle Junction. Cinnamon Rolls. The home of the monster cinnamon rolls. Yeah. Yes. We love cinnamon. <laughs> but we're all ready for some Ow. <laughs> cinnamon the stripper. <laughs> next up, cinnamon. Get those dollar bills ready, ladies, or guys, sorry. Or ladies, too, I guess. <laughs> Come on, cinnamon. And just name them all after spices. Paprika. Garlic. Garlic? Oh, I don't think garlic would get many tips. <laughs> oh, man. All right. We'll check that in in a little bit. Nice. All right, y'all, we're back, and one of us fell asleep. I'm not saying who. Yeah. After Gator. And so we missed Beto Junction. We're now here in Emporia, home of Emporia State University. We did come, come up here real quick. We're going to get off here and take a look at Emporia State just for a couple seconds. I haven't been here in a long time since... Uh, my wife went here and uh, disco dudes out there it is. so we're gonna make a quick stop at Emporia see what's going on we can see uh, our wife's old sorority house and uh, I don't know Do you know which room she was in or which yeah I can show you like what door house she was in, I can't even show her where uh, the dorm room she stayed in. So, we're here getting off the highway, and we'll be back. Alright, we're in lovely Emporia. Oh, Emporia proud. Uh, just keep going straight. Yeah, the armory is over there. Hey, the founding city of Veterans Day, I did not know that. Yes, and Emporia State, of course is uh, known for their uh, teacher's uh, program. This is, uh, Miguel, this is where mommy used to live. This is her uh, sorority house. This is the uh, Chi Omega sorority house. And if you take, uh, take a left into the campus here, and then we can uh, look around really quickly. There used to be down the road the, uh, a drive through liquor store and then like an old train car that is a restaurant. We can maybe pass through there. You didn't turn right here. I was like, oh, it's nice here. And it's been years since I've been here. I don't think the CVS was here back then either. Right turn only. Okay. We're on the other side. I'll show you Miguel, uh, mommy's old dorm. 
also it's on the other side of the campus. Oh, and we can't go anywhere. So. It said right turn only. So it did turn, say right turn. So they turn you into a dead end. Okay. This is stop. All right. right take, turn take a right. Right uh, turn only. We'll go in the other entrance. <laughs> so we will uh, come back here in just and a here few. Here we are on ESU. There's Corky. He's their mascot. He's the Hornet. And people are passing us. Hey, what the hell are these crazy people doing? I'm not used to this. <laughs> All right, so we're back. Disco dude is up. He was passed out a little while ago. We just saw, you saw where your mommy used to live mm -hmm. long before you were born. <laughs> we're gonna see here in a little bit, uh, we'll see the football stadium. And um, we will uh, see the dorm she used to stay in. I've spent many, nights in that dorm room and then uh we'll go see this one room uh, schoolhouse and so we'll be all right down. so we're coming up on the uh dorm this is the hall where uh miguel where mommy used to live i think it was like the fourth floor it might have been the fifth floor it was like that set third set of windows over the you get in you can make a u-turn and go back around the other Way unless you want to see anything else on campus. Yeah, those are the twin towers. That's the uh, the other dorms. That's where uh, uh, our friend Patterson used to stay in those. And I've stayed in that dorm with him before. Crazy story of coming here for a Tejano band called uh, Jaime Los Chamacos that played at the uh, fairgrounds. And. Uh, yeah, we had an interesting little adventure because that tower over there allows alcohol. The one that uh, Liz used to live in didn't. And yeah, that's all I can say. Is it? And uh, oh, you can't see the stadium anymore. I thought you used to be able to see like the stadium from the uh, parking lot. So technically, you could watch like the football game from out here if you really wanted to. Yeah, you probably got rid of that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's a lot of bright ideas. <laughs> There's the old uh, physical education building where the uh, gym and that kind of, kind of stuff is. Cool. But we're going to go explore down yonder over there. The one-room schoolhouse. Which I don't think I've ever visited this thing. Is there a place to park? Oh, like, uh, no. We place? might be able just to just... Let me pull up here. Yeah, yeah just... let's... Well, like unless a... the campus police stops us. We can probably stop here for a few. Why so we're going to go explore... We're going to explore the uh, schoolhouse. All right, so we're coming up on the one-room schoolhouse. This is actually a memorial to fallen educators. Like I said before, ESU Emporia State is known for their uh, education program. They uh, graduate a lot of uh, Kansas uh, teachers. And so they have this uh, schoolhouse, which is a memorial to educators who have uh, passed on. Oh, there you go. There's the well. There's a well right there. 1843, I'm, I don't know a whole lot of the history of this building. I don't even remember this being here. 1873, sorry. But Miguel, back in the days, you had all the kids in one little room. You didn't have like separate classrooms or separate grades. You had basically one teacher in the uh, front of the, uh, classroom teaching all the kids of various ages I don't know if there's anything inside that we can possibly see but we'll uh, peek through the windows all right we can't get in but we can see here that it is uh, restored inside I keep getting a glare so I'll, I'll peek in from the other windows as well but they do have the desk and everything there like it would have been back in the 1800s so this is pretty cool mm -hmm. i love antique desk that's one of the things 
I don't have room for, but I've seen them like at antique shops and thrift shops for pretty good deals. And I've always wanted to pick one up and restore it, but never have. But I, I love them. They're awesome. There's another little view from one of the other windows. Gosh, I'd like to come here sometime when it's open. They probably do open it now. Yeah, they probably do open it for people to see. Can you imagine, Miguel, what do you think looking at this old schoolhouse? Well, Could you imagine going to school in a place like that? A heater. Oh, why is there a heater in the Because that's how they heated. They didn't have what we have today. You go and hit the thermostat and you've got air conditioning, you've got heaters. They actually had to have like the wood burning stove. And that's also how they like heated water and probably cooked food. I don't know if they. I guess kids probably brought their own lunches back then, I'm assuming, but a there is a pot there and a chalkboard. We'll see here in probably the next shot. But wow. could you imagine going to school like that? No. <laughs> yeah. All right, here you can see the uh, teacher's desk and the books, the globe, chalkboard. Here's the old writing tablets, not like tablets of today that are electronic. Each kid usually had like a little chalkboard where they would write on. Now those pencils, I doubt those are actually from the 1800s. They look kind of modern. <laughs> but this is really cool. Try to zoom in a little bit. That's a big dictionary. Where? Whoa. That big book. And that's a, a dictionary? Yeah, I just zoomed in on it. It says Webster's International Dictionary. Oh, that's huge. What's There's the, the bell. bell. That is bell is haunting to me. In grade school, uh, if we were eating lunch and the teacher had one of those big bells, it was a signal to shut the hell up. Oh, that's uh, at our school too. Uh, and and uh, yeah, we had a mean teacher named Miss Baska, mm -hmm. and she would take that bell if you you if she rang the bell and you didn't stop talking, she would get that bell and ring it right in your ear. Luckily, I never had that happen to me, but uh, my cousin Ronnie wasn't so lucky. And then it was also punishment if you were bad in, in lunch. You would have to go and uh, eat your... Uh, you would have to eat your lunch in the middle of the um, lunchroom and, for, and with all the other kids like laughing and making fun of you. I don't think that nowadays that would even fly. Like People are too sensitive. That'd be like... No corporal punishment or something now definitely not from the 1800s <laughs> this room does have uh, heating and cooling but probably needed to keep the place warm and keep the antiques aerated and whatnot and that's locked across the street of course is the armory so there's a tank Ooh, it's chilly out here So we're going to explore this memorial area really quickly before we before we head on. And then I think we're going to go back to the car because it's chilly and I need to pee. So here we go. All right, so we're coming up on the memorial area. And I'm almost sure that when Liz went to school here, this wasn't here. But it uh, looks like... These uh, benches and stuff are dedicated to maybe some donors or something like that. There's also different uh, bricks here with uh, names on them. Here's another. Yeah, we'll go check it out. And then there's a list of names. Dan's running. He's chilly. Don't drop your camera. Wow. So there's some people, I guess, that are memorialized or remembered by these uh, plaques here. We'll go see what this is. There's some type of little kiosk over here. As told as it is, it may not even be on. I don't know. Maybe this will tell us a little bit. Oh, there's a touch screen. All right, let's see what... Oh, you can like check in, I guess, on like Facebook or something. Cool. 
And here is uh, some of the donors. So again, this is the uh, schoolhouse here at Emporia State University. We're gonna check back in in a little bit. Disco dude, what do you think? Was this pretty cool? Yeah. All right, we'll see you next stop. Hi. Mary Wyndham and the West <laughs> Texas Rednecks. <laughs> Our soundtrack to our road trip. I still remember the video for those two. I, I know. <laughs> the video was hilarious. Rest in peace, Kurt Henning. Hey, <laughs> rap is crap. Rap is crap. All right, so we're gonna have to have this debate. Better song, rap is crap or Ever Connors, I am him. Rap is crap. Oh, oh. Miguel, what do you think? Which is it better? Rap is crap or Ever Connors, I am him. I am him. Yeah, yeah. I am him. He's crap too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. I hate every. Oh, that's <laughs> that's messed up. I like every. Here we go. Welcome to the Oh wait, that's Rick Steiner. Wrong Steiner. Who is the sirens? You got it. Get the ambulance going. I used my ringtone for Ken. The whenever American called, males. Whenever he killed me, killed, whenever he called me, my stepdad called me and played Scott Steiner. So here comes the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian Pillman. Blondes have more fun. We get to see Brian Pillman Jr. tonight. Get the Scott Steiner music. I can't find Steiner. That's what I was looking for. Wolfpack, that was one of my favorites. Oh, oh I do love that. I love the Wolfpack theme song. What was the Wolfpack thing? like that? Don't turn your back on the Wolfpack. Might wind up in the body bag. Where's the Wolfpack? Bad boys are wrestling.
Probably my favorite WWE theme song right now. Bobby Groove. Well, I like his uh, rednecks and long rednecks and long neck women. You know that one? James. Beer money? Yeah. Well, James Corn, the long necks yeah. and red. Oh, like okay. Him. I had that as his theme that he's like on my PS3 for 2K. I love me some Bobby Roode though. And then here's another good old classic. This was actually redone on the uh, original wrestling album, but back in the days it was from uh, um, NRBQ, NRBQ, Lou and the Q, Captain Lou Albano. Captain Lou, Captain Lou, Albano. Captain Lou, Captain Lou, how do you do? Captain Lou, Captain Lou, Albano. And of a thousand faces. Captain Lou, Captain Lou, Albano. 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 Captain Lou, Mr. Rubber Band. That's all I remember. Oh, I love Captain Lou. I was Captain Lou for Halloween one year. Damn. It's like some American dream. So we're gonna go see his friend. He's wearing like his garter ball. Let me see if I can find it. Captain Lou Alpha. Here we go. That's not the original version of That's the flea market ripoff, common man. What was his music? I don't remember what his music was. Just look it up and see what. Did he steal it from everybody else too? Did he have a mixture of everybody else's music? Shoot, I'm playing something from Tangled. <laughs> this is not Frozen. Let it go, let, let it go. go. Do you want to see some wrestling? <laughs> yes, I want to <laughs> see some wrestling. <laughs> it doesn't have to. Oh, I can't find it. <laughs> We're good at singing. Yeah, we are. Hey, if ever it's good, we're good. Yeah, we're very good at singing. Cassidy, that's where me and Jason went. Jason. From Topeka to uh, Kansas City one night. Uh, we took a five hour, 45 minute trip because we got lost and went to Cassidy. And yeah, what's in Cassidy? Nothing. <laughs> it should have been an hour drive from Topeka to Kansas City, <laughs> but he told me to go the another route and it was dark, it was snowing, it was winter. We ended up in Cassidy. Awesome. Five hours and 45 minutes to get home. Jason. <laughs> Here's another one of my favorites. The Slickster, baby. I should have brought my WWE some that. I have like my WWE themes and stuff. Forevermore. Same old story. There we go. I walk through the door. This is a slick stud talking at you, honey. It's slick. Reverend Slick. And I, I know it. I'm not. Sorry. And then they don't. 
when him and uh, Lance Cade broke up mm -hmm. and then uh, he was like singing on the announce si table yeah he was singing on the announce table friends in low places mm -hmm. and then like after that I saw him at WLW again I was trying to try to get I think I tried to get him to sing at the show but I forgot I all about that did, or I didn't ask him but. blame it all on my roots I showed up in booze ruin your black tie theater. last one Last one show. Gosh, I remember that because he left. He left uh, Lance in the ring. I don't remember the whole thing. I don't have a really great memory. I just remember that he was like singing on the announce table, yeah. and he was really good. I forgot about that. Why don't you be a singer instead? He's looking for another occupation. Oh, that's like you should be a singer. DJ. That's neat. Here it is. What you got, Trevor? Yeah. I don't know what their song was. That looks out right in the back of the head. A lot of strength, down of velocity. And now, let's see what Trevor Murdoch can do. He's oh, that, is that the cream race? Yeah, that's the plan. Oh, cool. Come in and get the tag and go, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. There's a roll-up. Get rid of the shoulders. Hey, what did they do? Hey, hey. Cade was swerving when he finished. We do not own the rights to this video. Twitter. 
see where we can find some of our favorite wrestlers coming for you. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we can find some crazy clowns. But I'm looking forward to seeing Trevor tonight too. I think the last time we saw him was Metro Pro when he was Santa Claus. Yeah, it was Metro Pro. We'll be back. Peace. All right, we have made it. We're here at the Cotillion for IWR. It's gonna be a fun night. We've uh, we've already seen some uh, fans that were at NWR last night, so. It'll be really cool. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to sign off. After IWR in Wichita, we're here with Disco Dude. We got Dan on the other side here. Oh, no, I'm so Eugene. <laughs> and we are here at our favorite hangout after wrestling at Hooters. Enjoying some fish tacos. Actually, we got some... Uh, Buffalo dip. That's good stuff. It, buffalo dip's excellent. That's, that, that, that's good. <laughs> so anyway, the night show in Wichita was awesome. awesome. Um, well, I'll let you tell Melina. Oh. Yeah, so I got a new, we got a new recruit for the Guild Army. Um, you put on the spot, I don't like that. Uh, but uh, I, I explained, we explained uh, Justice for Gail, the Gail's Army. What's the camera I'm on? Look, I'm not looking at the camera. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, she's in uh, full support for Gail Rogers, Justice for Gail. She, she understands it, and uh, she supports it fully, and uh, she is the newest recruit to the Gail's Army, and she proudly is wearing a Gail's Army tag. Yeah, and I enjoyed meeting good old JR and, of course, Brandy Rhodes. And uh, I actually talked to Brandy a little bit about the Shockmaster, my hero, the Shockmaster, because, of course, that is uh, Brandy's uncle-in-law. So that's the uh, Uncle Fred that uh, Cody, as a kid, was referring to when he called Dusty. I was like, was that Uncle Fred that just fell? <laughs> but excellent promotion. I did talk to several of the guys there. They uh, are looking into coming to KC, so that'll be very cool. I suggest the Memorial Hall. I think Memorial Hall would be the right size venue for them. It was a bigger crowd tonight, too, than the last time. And... A lot of people did the VIP. Um, if you haven't been, it's like part WrestleCon, part wrestling show. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. So bring lots of money. But yes. They bring in a lot of headliners, uh, former WWE people, and then all the indie guys are out there as well, and they make themselves available to meet and greet with the fans. Some charge, some don't. It just kind of depends. All the some of them. Uh, set their own uh, pricing or whatever but uh main event we saw big papa pump paula if you hear me <laughs> and uh he faced the navajo warrior from the arrow club very Cheers. short match but it was really cool to see scott steiner coming out in the nwo gear i kind of popped for that um the women's, the women's match was awesome uh, molina was injured though so she with her kneecap or something. She told yeah. me uh, it was supposed to be a uh, tag team with uh, Melina and uh, Allie versus the Spoiled Brats, but Melina was injured, so it was just Allie versus uh, Selena from the Allie, from the Spoiled Brats. But Melina did come out and uh, cause a distraction and help Allie win at the end. So yeah, that all worked out, and it was cool to see both Seidel brothers on the uh, on the show tonight. And yoga sucks. <laughs> and uh, he knew it. He knew the chant. And it was funny. Yeah, he didn't know the chant when uh, Mike came out. And Mike, we love you, man. 
Yeah. We really do. We just like giving you a hard time. So Mike comes out. We love doing And you. he uh, he comes out with his yoga mat and all that. And he's walking down the stairs. And he's looking <laughs> the other direction. And Dan and I. Yo, Dan and I just sucks. Uh, it really, really, really sucks. Yo, it really sucks. sucks. So we start that chant. <laughs> and Mike like looks over to us. He's like. What? You guys? <laughs> you guys follow me. And so I reach out to shake his hand, and then of course he takes it back. <laughs> but it was cool seeing him on the show tonight. We hadn't seen him in NWL in a while as Ken Dharma, so. Um, also got to talk to Bull Schmidt tonight. I missed him. And, uh, oh man, that just reminds me. Things what? that you say a lot. What? <laughs> what do I say a lot? Bullshit? I don't know. Bullshit? <laughs> or bullshit? <laughs> so I saw Bull uh, Schmidt. He was there with Trevor. Uh, Bull Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bunch of Bull Schmidt. <laughs> so anyway, um, he actually drove to Coffeeville to spend the Coffeeville. night. Coffeeville? Coffeeville? That's where he's from. Oh, oh, no, oh no, yeah. Trevor. Trevor drove to, oh, Coffeeville. Drove to Coffeeville and stayed the night with Bull. And um, they're best friends, of course. So Bull wanted me to send a message out to all the uh, KC fans and all the guys, the former Metro Pro wrestlers. Uh, he says, Bull says hello. And uh, he and Trevor would like to get in an NWL ring possibly sometime. Yeah. So that'll be kind of cool. Nope. Seeing Eugene was cool. I've always dug his gimmick. And, uh. Sorry, Eugene. His uh, cheese dip is really good. Let's see who else was there. Uh, Malico. It is yeah, good. good stuff. Oh, it is good. <laughs> I like it too. Yeah, thank you. So, uh. I just lost my train of thought. Making a cameo open. Yeah. <laughs> Our Hooters will come by and I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I was going. We were talking about, I don't remember. I was trying to see what else was there. Like, what else would we have? Yeah, we got to see Malico, uh, Ev Evan Bourne. The crazy guy that he's... Crazy, creepy clown. Scared the disco dude. Yeah, he's scared the disco dude. The Malico's little pet dog guy. Yeah. Melina is a very sweet... She is. She is. We just we stopped and chatted for her, chatted the with her for like. The entire intermission. Yeah, the entire intermission we just, just talking. Talking to her. She was gonna the whole some, time. She was gonna set up some some of her pictures and sell some more. She is. You know she is. Brian them. Brian Pillman Jr. Legit guy. Looks a lot like his dad. And total badass in the ring. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing more from him in the near future. So. He is the real deal, for sure. The beginning was a little but confusing. The beginning was a little confusing. There was no... There were just, like, two wrestlers in the ring, and then they both started kind of punking each other, shoving and whatever. And there was, like, no introduction that the match, the show was even starting. But I guess it was kind of like a dark match, because I don't even think the uh, camera crew taped it. I don't know, because then after he... That guy, one guy... Won, the first guy that was in the ring, he ended up winning. And then after the match, he was like... That'll teach you not interrupt me or whatever. Like, I don't know what he was interrupting. He was just standing in the ring. I don't know if he was getting a workout well, done or what. Was like practicing or something. I know. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on there, but uh, it was all good. I had a lot of fun tonight, and uh, we're gonna start documenting our our uh, nights. I can't wait for them to come back to Wichita. They are coming back, and one of the cool things is. Uh, a lot of the indie workers that were there tonight saw our NWL shirts and they were like, man, I want to work in the NWL. And that's coming from like Chan Chandler, Chandler the Hopkins. Truth, Hopkins, uh, that 80s guy, I can't remember his name. Uh, I'll have to look him up. I don't remember. It's Tony Walkman. I don't know. Yeah, there was uh, actually quite a few. And then uh, actually the owner, the boss from... Uh, um, IWR was asking about NWL and uh, you know and he's uh, seen the product before and and enjoys it and uh, so it was really cool to 
kind of represent. I don't like wearing other promotion shirts to another show. It's kind of a jerk move. I, I had to sometimes. wear my. I, I had to wear Justice for Gil. Though. Yeah, I had to. But uh, other people were in NWL last time though too. So. Yeah, there were. There were people wearing NWL shirts there the last. I time. mean, if you go to WWE show and you wear, you know, you wouldn't wear it. My first choice, my first choice was to wear my young book shirt, but I couldn't find it. So, no, he was gonna go to Shopmaster, but yeah, he I, was, didn't. I almost came as the Shopmaster. Don't so let's he, turn to Mr. Miguel. I'm say, don't make people dizzy. Yeah. All right, Miguel, what was your moment? What did you think of the it was, show? It was your first show. First show. It was pretty cool. I liked it. Favorite thing, favorite match, favorite moment. <laughs> I was gonna ask you what your favorite match was. No, nope. well, we're asking you. Well, we're asking you. We already discussed it. It's your turn. Where we go? Um, probably. The guy from Clown. Malico. Yeah, Malico. Malico School. Malico's got a great gimmick. Yes, he does. Oh, and the cool oh, thing, not really a clown, but... and the cool thing is, he and that I I can't remember what was his name, insane, insane. But I think it's spelled weird, like insane. Yeah, uh, his little pet on a leash, dog type character. They actually he's stay. He's crazy. He's supposed to be like a psycho, a after, psychopath. After the show, he was sitting at the table and he was like he wasn't talking or anything. And, he stays in gimmick, which is really cool. the, the little part thing or whatever, and he was like telling, he trying to like find, he tried to sign, tell people that he's crazy, he's, he's crazy. And, and then he like ran down the aisle and chased some kids, and and he scared the disco he scared dude. The disco dude, it was awesome. Oh, yeah, disco dude was there and he came up and scared you. So that was your favorite moment of the night. Yeah. Would you scared? <laughs> would you come back to IWR? Yeah. Yeah. I'll totally. All right. And Dan, your favorite moment? MX. This is bought on the camera. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was hard. There's a lot of... There's a lot of great moments. And it was cool, too. I mean, but, you know, the wrestling or, like... It was cool meeting all the people, though, too, you know. That's really cool. It always been on the spot and like, that's my favorite thing. And I have to, really, I have to go back in my head and try to think of all the matches and remember what was my favorite. And even JR asked about Gil and the Justice for he Gil. Did. He asked what it was about. I told him. And him and Army did. But I don't remember. Okay. All right, y'all. We're gonna go ahead and sign off for now. But what was your favorite match? My favorite match. Yeah. I. Gosh. I wish the, I wish the Steiner match would have gone a little. I, yeah, I wish the Steiner match. I was looking gone, forward to the Steiner match. It was a no DQ match. I thought it would spill out into the crowd like the last time. It, it, didn't. it just didn't, it didn't go very long, unfortunately. I wish it would have gone longer than a little bit more crazy stuff. They didn't really do anything, really. But it was a good match. Well, not lucky to go to two, but I think probably one of the most entertaining ones had to be probably Eugene against uh, Malico. Malico, and then the um, Cowboys Chandler and Trevor oh. Murdoch. Yeah, who booked that? <laughs> Cowboys first Indians. What? What the heck? Yeah. Um, and the, you the, had uh, the Indians attack from behind. Yeah, you had Chandler and uh, Trevor against the Arrow Club. And that was a really uh, entertaining match. It was cool. I was. But the Indians always attack from behind because they did that attack match and then Navajo. Yeah, wore, Navajo Warrior. He fought Scott Steiner and he attacked him from behind to start right here. So the Indians attacked from behind. That's crazy. Yeah, well, it might be, but hey, it says Indian, but whatever. <laughs> they attack from behind. And that's why we took the order. <laughs> All right, man. I really do love Indians. We're going <laughs> to sign off. Peace. All right, everyone. It's uh, about four in the morning. Uh, we got home uh, a little after three. So I just thought I'd kind of recap uh, 
our drive home was pretty uneventful. We just kind of stopped for gas. Although we did accidentally uh, go through the K-Tag uh, um, line at the uh, toll. So I'm not sure if we'll be getting uh, something in the mail. I don't know how that works. So sadly, we didn't pay the toll. We uh, missed the uh, lane somehow. But anyway, again, <clears throat> it was a fun night. We love our Russell weekends. Miguel had a blast. Uh, the dog's barking. But I can't wait to do it again. I'm not sure where our next destination will be. A um, little sad that we missed uh, Beto Junction. We didn't get to get our cinnamon roll. I would have loved to have shown those. Uh, um, we did hit Emporia State. And uh, got to I got to show Miguel, the disco dude, where uh, Mommy went to school. And... Uh, when I first met my wife, uh, she was a student there. And so I've spent a lot of times, quiet Luke, I spent a lot of times at that campus. So it was really cool to kind of visit it again and show Miguel since he had never been there. Um, IWR, legit promotion, Brian Pillman. It was really cool to see Brian Pillman Jr. in action. Really cool to see it all the uh, stars and to meet uh, JR. I can't wait to try his barbecue sauce and beef jerky and uh, his seasoning. That ought to be pretty cool. But I think the highlight of the night though was Melina. She absolutely fell in love with Miguel. And you know how like people have celebrity crushes? I think she has a non-celebrity crush in Dan Marsh. It was like every time Dan would step away. I knew where to find him. He was at Molina's table, and the two of them would just talk. And it wasn't like talking wrestling. It was just like talking about just random stuff like pogs and and uh, kids and uh, old video games and uh, old just talk. oh, Miguel says old people talk. <laughs> That's messed up, Miguel. And I chatted with her about uh, South Park and making it rain. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So it was a lot of fun. I can't wait till we do it again. And hopefully we'll plan a little more visits because I'm actually a history buff myself as well. So I, I kind of like to check out some historical places. And I think it would be kind of cool for Miguel to be able to visit uh, some historical spots or just different things along the way. So um, we do have some stuff planned for our next trip down to Joplin when the NWL returns to Joplin. Uh, we're, we are going to go to, there was a town we passed, it was like Compton, Missouri or Compton something, Missouri. So of course, I'm a big uh, hip hop head. So it reminded me of straight out of Compton. So We've got to get a sign with the, or a picture with the uh, Welcome to Compton sign. And then uh, I know we're planning on um, um, uh, going out to an Amish community and checking out like a Amish, I, I guess it's like a, I don't know what you call it, um, some type of place where they sell stuff like a, I don't know, general store or something. So I think that'll be pretty fun. I'm not sure, you know, because of their religious beliefs and, and being respectful of that, um, I'm not sure if we're going to be allowed to tape, like, inside the store or the... I, I really don't know what it is, if it's like a farmer's market or what. But they do have a website, so... Um, but I know they don't really allow photographs of them, you know, due to their beliefs and stuff. So, you know, we'll probably get some footage on the outside. I'm not sure what we can do inside, but we'll try. Um, um, and then we're always open to suggestions. If any of you guys that follow our videos, I, I mean, this is just kind of us be, being goofy and being nerds i mean we are wrestling nerds uh so if anybody has any suggestions of when we you know announce our trips where we're going and be like hey i know this place you should stop 
um, then definitely, uh, you know, hit us up and let us know uh, where we should go and uh, we'll try to visit there. I mean, there's a lot of historic stuff here, really just right under our own noses. You know, even in this city, we could go around Kansas City and show you a lot of uh, history. Um, and that's what I love. And I'd love to educate my son of this stuff. And he has an appreciation for history as well. And so I think this will be a cool experience for Disco Dude to uh, see some of these places so we can kind of combine uh, our wrestling uh, obsession with actually showing, uh, making a little educational for Miguel. Although we do educate him about wrestling, you know, he gets to see like all these legends and stuff at, uh, at some of these shows. So, um, but, oh, one last thing though, the uh, camera guy at IWR, he just absolutely loved me and Dan. He said we were like the craziest, <coughs> craziest fans there. And, and so every time we were like chanting and stuff, he was like, um, he kept uh, panning the camera over to us when we were chanting or yelling at someone or whatever. And as he was filming us, he'd throw up like the U-Rock, the devil horn thing. And so <laughs> the, the guy was really cool. He cracked us up. But anyway, I'm. if you watched the video all, uh, all the way to this point, thank you. If you didn't, that's cool too. But... Uh, Anyway, if you want to subscribe to us, uh, we'll eventually have these on YouTube and we'll uh, um, post more videos when they come. So, anyway, thanks. Good night.